Welcome to Chandler and Focus. I'm Council Member Rick Human. Um, my pleasure to introduce uh, my guest uh, today, Jeff Winnegar. You may recognize him. He's in a different chair today. He used to be in this chair over here as a member of the Chandler City Council, and now he's a uh, state representative for District 17. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks for coming today. You bet. I appreciate yeah. you having me. It's, uh, it's so fun to be back. It, it's, it's a little different chair. Uh, let's begin by sharing your background with our viewers, including you know uh, your involvement in politics from where you started and where you're at today. Yeah. Um, well, I moved here in the early 90s uh, to open up restaurants, and so we, uh, we have five now, Dilly's Deli and Florodino's Pizza and Pasta. Met my wife just a few years after I moved here and uh, been together ever since. We have three kids. Uh, two, all three went through uh, Chandler Unified School District and uh, uh, two of them still in Chandler Unified. First, uh, my son, whose birthday is today, the day we're filming this, is a freshman in high school at Hamilton. So it's a, it's a little scary, uh, but shout out to my son, Christian and daughter, Grace. Um, and uh, yeah, I got involved in politics a few years ago. You know, Chandler's always been an incredibly run city, but there's some things that, you know, uh, the old cliche where I'm complaining about things and my wife's saying, why don't you run? And one night during a poker game, I decided to run and uh, um, had just an incredible time here in Chandler. Just uh, loved working with the staff, which is amazing. The different councils was great. And, uh, uh, but then was termed out and kind of thinking where I, could go next and uh, where I could be of most use. And uh, I thought the legislature and uh, was blessed that the people of Chandler and the district uh, um, sent me there and gave me the privilege of serving. And it's it's been interesting. Yeah, we, we had a lot of fun. We used to, we bantered quite a bit on the, on the, on the dais and stuff, but I think <laughs> we both had the right place and, and, and thoughts and process and stuff. So, you know, when you decided to run for state representative, what was the process, I guess? And, you know, you were termed out here, but give us a little bit more background in terms of why you, you know, why you're at the legislature now. So, well, yeah, it was pretty much the same process as running for council, a little bit different uh, uh, audience. It's a little bit uh, bigger area, but mainly I wanted to kind of continue what I and what we worked on together as a council, which is really uh, uh, attracting business, making it a uh, you know, Chandler's probably about the friendliest small business uh, city in Arizona, and I'd like to spread that to the whole state. Just if people want to be an entrepreneur, um, Chandler and Gilbert and the entire state of Arizona is the place to come. And so that's kind of been my focus so far is on that kind of thing. And, and I thought, uh, you know, you're one of 60, but I still thought I could make a difference down there and, and uh, bring a different perspective, a a business perspective of, you know, day in, day out, the person who's actually, you know, either doing the books or out, you know, bussing tables or doing whatever, that in the trenches kind of uh, uh, mindset to the legislature. And you know, your experience as a restaurant, you know how to bus tables and everything else where some people sit behind a desk and I think you've been really involved in that. So since you've been down there, how's your experience compared to being on council? Oh, that is a lot different. Um, and I enjoy it, but it is completely different. I mean, the great thing about being on council is you put in a lot of hours, but um, I'm five minutes from my kid's school. I'm five minutes from home. I'm five minutes from here. I'm five minutes from my business. So it's, it's you know, you can do multiple things in two hours. Right. right? Um, whereas down there, you're down there and you're down there for, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 hours. Or if they do one of their all night sessions, you're there for 24, which is crazy. But, uh, um, so it's different in that aspect, but it's, it's, it's good because you're, you're solving big statewide problems. But what I really miss about being on council is that, and you know this, cause you and I have both done this, where somebody calls you with a problem at eight or nine in the morning. And a lot of times you have it solved for them by two or three in the afternoon. And that is so gratifying. That's big kudos to the staff you have here who help, you know, people mm -hmm. call us and we try to help right. facilitate the solution. But yeah, you want to get something fixed down there. I mean, you're lucky if you have it fixed in a year. Uh, a lot of times it takes two to five years if you ever even get it fixed, right. you know, because a lot of people might not have the same perspective. So that's frustrating. That was what was so gratifying here at the city. 
And, and we have a great staff at the city, but it's also the fact that you, like I am, were involved. We can pick up the phone. If a citizen calls us, right. it's like, hey, unless it's totally off the wall, it's like you're calling staff. And staff was great about, and is great about responding to people. And you're right, because we, we eliminated some different regulations over time that didn't make a lot of sense. And there's regulations on the books <laughs> at right. the Capitol. And it's like, you try to get rid of them and people like look at you like, no, we like that. or you know. and, and there was even times where you didn't get something solved to the to what the constituent actually wanted, but at least they have clarity at that point. Right. And it's not taking two years to get that clarity. They're getting it in a day or two, and so then they're moving on to a different aspect or, or fighting in a bigger way, right. but at least you're getting that clarity. Is it because of the down there taking so long? Is it just because of the outside interest and you've got 60 different people from around the state and everybody's got a different opinion or some of it's more just roadblocks because we, we've always done it this way or? All of the above. I mean, it's we've always done it this way. It's uh, some people, you know, a few might. Uh, it's it's more politics, or they have, uh, you know, very strong feelings just on on that particular issue. But I one thing I have noticed that w we don't really get here at this at the city. I still say we like. I'm still here. Well, you're, still, you're, well, you're, um, you're a resident. Of, you're a resident <laughs> right. of the city. So um, one of the big differences is there is a huge. Uh, uh, gulf between rural issues and city issues. And uh, so that was surprising me. I mean, I guess I always knew it, but I didn't realize how big of a gulf mm -hmm. it was. And so they want completely different things. And they also look at things with a completely different perspective. Right. And they, they have to stick together more as the population changes, especially when we get to the next census, where the cities will have so much more influence than the, the outlying areas exactly. and stuff. So it, it does make a challenge. You've always been a big advocate for you know small businesses, and one of the reasons I wanted to do the show with you is because you have your uh, you, the first initiative was House Bill twenty five ninety one, um, which is known as the crowdfunding bill. So um, let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, I know there's been some articles in the paper recently, and like any bill, when you first pass it, and you always have to tweak certain things. But what what's the benefit of this? Who's it going to help? Talk a little bit about the bill and stuff. So yeah. Uh, when I, I started kind of developing the idea with Congressman Schweikert, he's been a very big proponent of this kind of thing. And he actually, uh, the Jobs Act, which was passed uh, two and a half years ago, was one of the only bipartisan things to come out of D.C. Uh, or anything it, coming out of right. D.C. Right. <laughs> it was a huge, huge uh, bill. The Schweikert office wrote a very narrow portion, which dealt with legalizing crowdfunding. And that's like the only portion that isn't implemented yet which is frustrating to me because uh, the staff, the department, uh, hasn't written the rules. And so they're basically holding up the bill. So he had seen that some other states had gone ahead with this uh, on their own, and they make it intrastate. Now, one thing when I start talking about this is uh, when I mention crowdfunding, if they're like my age or older, they have no idea what crowdfunding is. If they're younger than me, then they say, well, isn't that already legal? And so then I have to go through an education process. Uh, but basically, crowdfunding is just like it sounds. It's, it's, uh, and there's a few little uh, websites that do this, like Kickstarter, where you can get on, or GoFundMe. And uh, so some of it's charity-based, where you're raising money for you know, a girl who broke her leg or something. And then some of it is, uh, you know, if I invent a, a new coffee cup that does something, and you can put it on Kickstarter, and then you basically are promising them, well, for every $10 you donate to my campaign, I'm going to give you a coffee cup or an autographed coffee cup. So it's kind of prize-based. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're funding from multiple people through the Internet, usually, and, and you know, the crowd of people. What my bill does, um, and I did work on it with uh, uh, State Senator Farnsworth, what the bill does is basically allow equity crowdfunding. So I'm in the restaurant business. Let's say I wanted to open up a new concept and it was going to cost me $49,000. I could raise, uh, put it out on the portals that are being created to facilitate this and say, for every $1,000 that somebody gives me, you're a 1% equity owner of the company. Um, and then I still retain 51% controlling interest of the company. And uh, I have 49 partners or people put in more than that that then they have more of an ownership. Um, and it's just a, it's a way of, an alternate way of raising money for your business um, where you might be giving up equity, but you're not going in debt right uh, mm -hmm. when you start. It's just another option for people. If you ever watch Shark Tank, I mean, one of the, which me and my kids love to watch it together, 
uh, one of the things that they always say when they're drilling somebody and they're haggling over one or two percent is they're saying, you know, would you rather be a hundred percent owner of a hundred thousand dollar company or a uh, fifty percent over of a owner of a twenty million dollar company? And sometimes, you know, that's kind of the thought right. process behind it. Is there so if you if I you have this concept of this process and I want to invest, is it a limited liability situation? So if I invest a thousand dollars and you have problems, is that investment, I mean, you can go away, away or you have, is it limited liability for No, you, your money's at risk. Well, no, um, I, that part I understand, yeah. but I mean, you open up this restaurant, you have, you know, it's either successful or it's not successful, and you have a lot of debts. The person that invested a thousand dollars, you could lose a thousand if you go out of business, but is there any, what's oh, the, li yeah. the liability side of it? Well, th those are gonna be some things that we're gonna address as we go on. Uh, right now, kind of like in DC, the Corporation Commission is writing the rules okay. for it. Um, and, you know, and there's also, you know, there's not really an exit plan at this point. And so we're, we're talking through those right. things. Uh, so there'll, there'll be a lot of, of tweaks. It is, uh, so the Corporation Commission will have uh, uh, responsibility over watching the portals that are facilitating right. the sales. But it's like anything else, you know, if somebody, you know, it's a conduit to facilitating a, a transaction. So, right. you know, if somebody calls up my grandma and uh, scams her over the phone, there, there are, you know, you, you uh, performed a scam, you broke the law. And so, uh, you know, any police action or, or, or entities can go after them and prosecute them for those things. It does have to be intrastate. And that's one thing I try to get across to people. Meaning that if you go out of state, you can't take money from people from Utah. It has to be an Arizona company, Arizona resident, okay. uh, which keeps you in line with interstate commerce laws and everything. But the good thing about that is what we always said is by local, you're basically being forced through a by local funnel right. for everything. And we're keeping some of these companies here that might be going for funding outside of the, the state. And then a lot of times, you know what happens is Silicon Valley pulls them there and now we've lost this company that we incubated mm -hmm. here in Chandler. So are there rules in terms of, you know, you're selling 49% of the company, whatever percent, you can sell 25% of the company, I guess. Are there rules so that only so many shares can be sold or how's it gonna work? If you want, you have this concept for a new, you know, restaurant, you need to raise $100,000 to do it. So you raise 49,000 from the, the private sector can somebody come in and I guess I'm looking for the downsides. Yeah, the, well, so there, there, I don't, we don't have any rules about how much equity you can give up or not give up, right. but there are rules about um, how much has to be funded of your goal. So if you have a goal of a hundred thousand dollars, you have to hit 80% of your goal to get the money. Okay. Um, and your money is held in escrow until that, uh, okay. until it happens. And there's a, a, a final date and any time up to 24 hours before that date ends, you can, decide against it okay. and and you know your money never goes uh, so are there, the are there prospectus that somebody when somebody puts this out are there so if i wanted to invest you want to come up with an idea talk to me about how the process is going to work well if i have an idea then i'll put it on uh what will be competing portals okay. so there'll be different internet portals and those people are responsible for vetting the companies that are coming in and also vetting the people so you're going to have to prove that you're an arizona resident before you're allowed access to the portal Okay. Um, and then after that, though, then, um, you know, you've been vetted by them and that's their responsibility. And, you know, we'll have some rules in place for that. But to me, it's going to be a little bit, again, like uh, the market will determine things because uh, let's say there's three different portals that are putting forward uh, uh, crowdfunding here in Arizona. If, if they've all done 10 deals and one of them has facilitated and had nine successful deals out of 10, and the other two are one or two for 10, where are you gonna list your company? Mm -hmm. Where are you gonna go to try to invest in a company? Right. I mean, I'm gonna gravitate towards those. We are looking at rules for things like, I think, and uh, that have increased transparency. So of the people that are on it, have an open comments that have to remain up the entire time. So, um, and you know, it's gonna be real names because these people yeah, are gonna be vetted. So it's not gonna be like <laughs> the Arizona Republic before you had to sign in Facebook right. and you have just the, you know, the haters gonna hate and all right. those people just slamming. Uh, but you're gonna get some transparency. I'm gonna say, hey, I did a deal with this guy, you know, before and he took off and wasn't there. So I'd like to add that added mm -hmm. transparency. It's not there right now, but I think it'd be a cool thing. Then, uh, real quick before I forget, the 
the amount is you can invest or take investments from each individual person up to ten thousand dollars okay um and you can raise up to a million dollars and a lot of people aren't going to need that much i mean a little right. company a tech shop might only need fifteen thousand right. dollars and only give up five percent right but it might you know be that boost that they need uh, but if you submit audited financials, you can go up to 2.5 million. Okay. Um, and who do they submit them to? Corporation commission? The money? No, I mean when they were trying to raise the the, the money through the crowdfunding. You go through the port. Through well, the port. you do have to register. You got to go and okay. do a registration, just like okay. any business at the corporation commission, and then they'll put you in a funnel. But then you got to go choose the portal that you want to go through. Okay. For those of you just joining us, um, you're watching Channel and Focus. I'm Councilman Rick Human. My guest today is. Former city council member Jeff Winnegar, now state representative Winnegar. We're talking about his role and experience at the, at the legislature. So the bill sounds exciting. I, I know there was an article in the paper not too long ago. What are some of the tweaks you're looking for? Are there portals set up? If, if somebody, are, have people started using this yet? I know the law didn't go into effect till what, July? Yeah, but, not quite yet. And I've been talking, a uh, few people who helped a lot uh, with the bill were uh, Lynn White, uh, who's very present down there, is, uh, uh, works for a law firm. Steve uh, Zilstra, who's with uh, um, organization uh, dealing with startups and everything, and then um, uh, the small uh, Arizona Small Business Association, and they have told me that yeah, there's portals in development. There should be launching any time, but we don't know of any uh, specific ones at this point. It sounds like a cool kind of thing. It's like anything. I mean, you got the bill passed, which was amazing in your first session. And now, you know, working out some of the details and stuff, but I think it gives an opportunity for those entrepreneurs who have good plans, kind of like Shark Tank in, yeah. in a way, uh, where some people want to invest their money and, you know, get some equity out of it and see something that's exciting and stuff. Well, so. Look at it this way real quick, is you have people from Tech Shop or Gangplank, okay? That's, that's kind of our funnel for, right. you know, some of the tech entrepreneurs. But think about a, a, a bad part of Phoenix or a, a, a one corner in Chandler that hasn't done anything and it's, it's it, it's not attractive and there's a neighborhood behind it. Now say that there's a chef in that neighborhood who uh, is this up and coming chef who just needs a break and he wants to open a restaurant. Now literally the that community could transform their own community. Mm -hmm. That community could invest in a neighborhood up and coming chef and develop a restaurant on their corner to help beautify their own corner and somewhat control their own destiny of their own community. And they're gonna support it because they got they got equity into it. Right. Too, so even if you're a one percent owner in something, oh, yeah, believe me, still, restaurant yeah, owners no. love going to their restaurant right. and saying that they own a restaurant. So even right. if you're one percent, hey, let's go to my uh, my yeah. shop and have a coffee while we're meeting there. And it's great and stuff. So recently you got presented with the Arizona Chamber this is a big card here, Arizona Chamber of Commerce Industry Rookie of the Year Award for your work on the crowdfunding bill. What's the recognition and what's it mean to you? It, it means a lot. It was, uh, it was one of five different people for different awards. The governor got one and a few others for uh, uh, at the chamber awards. It meant a lot. Like I said then, it, it, uh, it really is a team sport down there. I mean, you uh, sometimes here we worked on things individually. Sometimes as here a you team. had to count the four. There you got to count the right. Four. Yeah. But there, I mean, I had a tough time figuring out where the bathrooms were. I'm not even joking. It was crazy down there. And it's just a whirlwind, and I had so much help, like from from uh, some of the the lobbyists we talked about, uh, who were very uh, invested in these kinds of things. And I know lobbyist is a bad word, but the thing is, you don't have the staff down there that we do here. That's the great thing about here is we could go to any department head and say, "What's up with this?" You know, and get information. Down there, you just you really don't have that, and I haven't formed the relationships to have that yet. So, so that was very helpful. But all the freshmen, we had a great group of freshman lawmakers. And a lot of other lawmakers that held, like I said, the state senator was a help on it, uh, Farnsworth, and uh, um, you know the leadership got very much behind the bill. The governor, and then loved the idea, and so I had a lot of help. Uh, and this was a bipartisan. What was the the bill passed? What unanimously? Unanimously. Now, if everybody was there, there's some people. Right. You know, it was like 58 to zero or something. But yeah, yeah. it was unanimous, um, which doesn't I, happen very often down at the legislature. Not really. And one thing I did though is I I reached out. You know. Uh, to Democrats as co-sponsors, and um, there's a lot of good people down there on, on both sides. Right. Um, but you know, unfortunately, uh, some of the parties, you know, whoever's not in power, they just really don't even get their bills heard a lot of times. So it was important for me to, to get them on board, and it also gives both sides a win. 
because, uh, you know, if you're not co-sponsoring things sometimes down there and you don't get any bills up, then you're not getting any bills mm -hmm. passed. So it gave a lot of people who signed on a, a bill that they got passed and gave them some ownership in it. And, you know, it's different at the council level. I mean, we worked together on a lot of different things. We disagreed on different things. So, you know, one thing was always great is we moved on from whatever it is. But it, that is the, the tough part of the legislature. If you have somebody with a great idea that people won't run with it, which is right. crazy, you know. And so. I even found myself on a couple of things. There was a couple of bills that I thought, um, were really important and uh so there was a you know there was one bill that i didn't know if it was going to get a committee hearing and it, it dealt with uh human trafficking and stuff mm -hmm. and i actually went to the uh to the chairman and said you know i think this is a really important bill uh you know and that's how things should be it yeah. shouldn't matter if it comes from the left or the right if it's if it's right. good and makes sense let's do it because right. we're there to represent everybody not just one party or the other that we happen to put behind our name. And that's probably the biggest difference down there. I mean, you, here you could get anything on the agenda, whether it passed or not, at least right. people could hear it and people could do an up or down. One of the bills that I know was passed, and this is a bill that I uh, talked to people about a year ago and was amazed how it got blocked, but it finally got approved was the uh, Arizona beer bill, bill 1030. Um, you know, talk about that a little bit. I mean, I know the guys at Santan, I know the guys at, Four Peaks and stuff. I was amazed to sit there and, and saying, you know, there, there's forces like we talked earlier that lobbyists and from different sides, but here's a thing that was going to prevent, if we didn't get a pass, if you guys didn't get a pass, that putting people out of business. Yeah. They're successful, you know, local people. And it's somewhat the lobbyists, but the lobbyists are always uh, representing real people and real right. businesses. Sure. And it's basically entrenched power. And so there's this entrenched power, and, and you get this lobby. We, get the, hey, we got this here at the city sometimes. Like, well, that's just the way it's always been done. Or this has been like this since then and, and you don't go changing it. And so basically from, uh, from back in the early 30s, 1930s, uh, there was laws after prohibition that basically, uh, you know, you have your three tier system, but uh, you could only be in one tier. And it makes sense to a point, but what it was doing is really stifling a local uh, community and a local uh, businesses from growing and getting bigger and really inhibiting their ability to compete with the big guys, you know, Budweiser and stuff. Because what the big guys are doing, they're doing like what Facebook used to do uh, or still does, is they're just going around and buying up startups. Mm -hmm. So the big guys are just going and buying up these small little microbreweries and then they're not even telling, and it tells you something, they're not telling anybody that they, you know, that they bought some little brewery in right. Washington because they want that mystique of being the small guy because people are rebelling against the big brewers. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this basically kind of just leveled the playing field and just said, you know, I realize this is from the 1930s, but it's probably not appropriate at this day and age. And there's a lot of bills like that. Uber was like that. Uh, you know, you get these things. So, okay. It's the taxi uh, organizations. And these are laws that have been in place for so long, right. but that doesn't mean that tech, we're going to keep having these issues. Technology is going to keep massively disrupting all these traditional businesses. And to me, how successful we're going to be at the state is how quickly we adapt to it. Not meaning you just bow down to anything right. you do, but it shouldn't take two, three years to solve Uber, to solve the microbrewery problem stuff. And now we have, you know, Anthony Canacchio, a great hometown guy. Now we have him where, you know what a hard worker he is. Oh, he yeah. can just reach for the sky and try to grow as, as big as he can without having to say, all right, well, if I grow this big, I have to sell my restaurants, um, which is basically what it was going to do. I mean, these are the laboratories of where they test, you know, they, Anthony brews just beers mm -hmm. and the smaller right. things there, test them out. And then if they're good, then they can make it to the big production facility. Yeah. It, it was amazing because you're sitting there and it's, it's, Technology has changed so many things, good and bad. I mean, you know, yeah. something's been on the books for years. There's good reasons and bad reasons. It's a matter of industries. And Uber is a perfect example that people have protected it. And you're looking around the country. And I know Las Vegas, which I go up to quite a bit, they finally got it through and they're going to be able to bring it in. <laughs> and it, it's good for competition because there's cabbies out there who, you know, are, they're monopoly. But now you have competition, so you have to change with competition. It's no different than your restaurants. If right. you don't change, it's not going to work, but it's, it's got to be a level playing field to make, make it stuff. W other policy issues you're looking at or working on or you're looking at for next session and stuff? So. Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I've got a, every time I hear an idea, and this is true, it's kind of a cliche, but it's true that most good ideas come from constituents or other people you're running in, uh, you run into. And so in the notes of my iPhone, I just, uh, I uh, 
jot down anything I hear, an idea, or somebody says, well, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And, uh, and I jot them down. I've got a, probably about 50 things in there right now. I won't run near them. I'll scale that down to, you know, right. maybe a manageable 10 to 15. Some of these legislators run 30 bills, and there's no way you can keep track and do a, a good job of and not running re- that. not anymore. read them all either. So. Right. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'll start uh, narrowing them down. I've got some things dealing, you know, with education, some positive things, and uh, um, again, maybe some tweaks to some of the the uh, crowdfunding stuff. Uh, um, I'm very interested in, in DCS and the things that are going on there, and and uh, been meeting with uh, foster organizations. I met with the, uh, uh, Greg McKay, who runs DCS, um, and trying to come up with some uh, some answers to to that. And you know, to get the answers, you, you meet with the, all the the people involved. You're not the genius. I mean, I always think a good legislator, a good councilman, doesn't know everything, but he's he or she is willing to take in all the information and then make an informed yeah. uh, decision. And that's that's the big challenge is being able to decipher stuff. And you, know, you get some constituents that have really great ideas that nobody wants to listen to, and you have to work through those kinds of things. So. Well, and and some of the ideas make perfect sense. I had thought I had an original idea, and then I found out that somebody ran it two or three years ago, um, and there's no way it'll pass. And it just makes no sense. It won't pass just because of legalities, and that is. Fantasy football right now is not legal in Arizona. Now, it's legal, I, I think, if you go and you and 10 yeah, guys do it, or whatever. it right, right. But they have like DraftKings and these different websites where they're giving away a million dollar stuff. And we're one of only two or three states in the United States where you can't do it. But it's attached to the, which is very frustrating. And I'm hoping to get it fixed. But if I can't right now, I'm going to insist when the uh, new compact with the Indian tribes are, is, is done. I think in uh, the early 2000s, 20s, um, that it is addressed. Because right now, there's other things that any kind of a contest where there's a prize or anything, a lot of times we can't be involved in because it breaks the the compact with the tribes. And most people are like, what? That's fantasy football, not like I know. There's some of those, and, and that's some of those archaic rules that people, like I said, try to protect each other. Right. We're, we're starting to run out of time and stuff. You represent District 17. What's basically your area? Well, uh, thankfully, still uh, a lot of Chandler. It kind of uh, goes down Price, then jumps over to Dobson, then jumps over to um, Alma School, and then it's uh, east of there. Now I represent Sun, uh, Sun Lakes, which is great. Uh, community all the way out to Southeast Chandler. Then I have just a little bit of uh, West Gilbert, uh, like Northwest Gilbert in my district. Okay. So it's, you know, it's good. I'm, I still represent a large part of Chandler and uh, the West Chandler that I don't represent. I have a very good relationship with Bob Robson and Jill Norgard, and Jeff Dial and them. So I, I, you know, we work with them and meet sometimes on on different issues that, uh, that affect Chandler. But it's it, I, I'm very happy to still be representing uh, Chandler and uh, and maybe expand a little bit as well. That's cool. That's cool and stuff. So anything else you want to add? I mean, we're like about another 30 seconds or whatever. But yeah, another bill I had, which I think is very beneficial uh, to Chandler, um, deals with uh, some bonds where it used to be um, when you went out for these, it, it, it's uh, for businesses and it, you know, facilitated through, through uh, the city. But only certain, but we found that only 30 some of the top 100 businesses in Arizona uh, qualified for it. And so what we did is basically, I tried to take a conservative approach because a lot of times down there, you know, a lot of the conservatives and rightfully so, they, they don't want you giving a special perk just to one business or another. So I took it from an aspect of, uh, of giving it to any business that wanted to do it. And it's, it's tax free on the interest uh, from the federal government. And uh, your economic development director and a lot of other people say it's going to be very, very good for the state. We've run out of time. I want to thank you for coming in. Extend it to an hour. Yeah, I know. We can move over to the mayor's chair next time. So, But uh, I do miss you being on council. You were great to work with. Like I said, we worked well together on a lot of different things and stuff. And we did did have a lot of fun. Yeah, I appreciate you having me back. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.